This is where I usually find a lot of birds. After being out of college for 40 years now, I finally retired from public school teaching, but I continued piano teaching, which I did all along. In fact, there were some years in the middle of those 40 years where I had babies, and I still continued teaching piano just so that I could keep some music going and uh, stay current with teaching methods and things like that. And I currently have 10 students, but I have had as many as 36 at a time. So during the COVID year, teaching online was not very fun for me because I live in the country and I have terrible internet. But one good thing came out of it, and that is that my nephew who lives out in Seattle asked me if I would teach his son by Zoom. So I have this little five-year-old uh, piano student in Seattle who I started teaching. And he's really into Star Wars and dinosaurs. So I was able to find little melodies that captured his attention and kind of establish a relationship with him where I'd, I'd only met him once as a baby. So that has been a, a positive that came out of this. So I got interested in photography when I was a pretty young child, always wanting to take photos of my family. I had seven other brothers and sisters and lots of nieces and nephews. And so I would use little Instamatic cameras. But I realized pretty quickly that they took terrible photos. So my parents, actually my father, gave me a 35 millimeter camera for high school graduation. My mom passed away when I was a junior, so that's why I say my father. Um, it was a Yashica, and it was completely manual. So you had to learn f-stop and shutter speed and uh, do everything on your own, even focus on your own. There was nothing automatic and, of course, not anything digital. So I started out with that, I would say, back in the 70s. And then I progressed with different 35 millimeters, some that had uh, automatic focus, but I then got my first digital camera 20 years ago now, uh, pretty early in the, in the digital game. And right now I currently shoot with a Canon camera body and a, my big love is taking photos of birds. So I've saved up piano lesson money and bought a really big lens, uh, 600 millimeter. And that allows me to take photos of the birds that I dearly love. So um, I like to just go out and look for birds in various places. Horicon Marsh is one of my favorite places. Lots of different parks in Madison. Stricker's Pond and Tiedemann's Pond over in Middleton. Um, Nine Springs. Quite a few areas that I check regularly in Madison. This photo of the duck with the mask hanging around its neck has gone viral. It's my first photo to have traveled all over the world. I took it last September walking along Lake Michigan up in Sheboygan. And the good news is that when the duck swam away, 
the mask did come off of his neck. But I've been hearing from people virtually all over the world asking to use this photo in various ways, even being asked if it could be syndicated. I decided not to because they couldn't guarantee that it would be used appropriately and could have been picked up by an anti-masker group. It's the first photo that I've watched go all the way around the world, which was pretty cool. But um, it has become quite the hobby for me. And I started doing calendars with my photos a few years back, about five years ago. And that started allowing me to have a little extra cash to buy airline tickets to go visit my daughter because she lives in Europe and uh, works for Epic. And she uh, likes for me to come and visit. And so just coughing up that much money was kind of impossible. And so this calendar sales allowed me to start traveling to see her. And now she's moved to England. She was in Helsinki, Finland for four years. Now she's in Bristol, England. By the way, those are hickory nuts falling on our roof. It's getting to be fall and the nuts are falling. So it's beautiful to live in the country, but that's a sound we hear often. I can also hear a blue jay being really squawky or a crow. Anyway, I uh, started adding in greeting cards last year for the first time because people asked me if I would. So I ordered blank greeting cards and I started printing photos and putting them on greeting cards and selling them in packages of eight. And I sold 800 cards for Christmas time not Christmas related, but that's the time of the year I sold them. And it was just through my Facebook friends. So I kind of like to expand that and we'll see how it goes this year. I've already kind of started putting photos into folders of which ones I'm going to print. And I had last year, I had packets for butterflies, packets for birds in the area, a packet for birds from my travels, for example, I went to South Africa, Trinidad, a lot of Europe, and uh, Japan. So I had photos from those places. So the difference between a digital camera and having a 35 millimeter camera was pretty huge. First of all, I used to take a roll of 24 exposure film and parse it through however long I had to to get through a trip or an event and I can remember going to Europe in 1982 and I had a specific number of film canisters with me and I had divided how many days I was going to be in Europe which was 56 into how many days or how many rolls of film, and I knew how many photos I could take per day. And I could see the most beautiful things, but if I was out of, roll, of photos for that day, I didn't take any. Well, of course, now I regret that, but I just had no money to buy more film or develop the film. So during this past year, we collected caterpillars off of our milkweed plants in our yard and we brought them onto this back porch into big aquariums and watched as they became chrysalis, at, it went into their chrysalis form and then became butterflies and then we released them. And I was able to film the transformation, you know, when they're coming out of their, it's called a closing, when they're coming out of their chrysalis, I was able to film that with my cell phone much better than I could with my big camera because I couldn't get my large camera into the small space that I needed it to be and focused. So my cell phone actually allowed me to film these butterflies and take photos of the whole process. So I've been enjoying photographing birds for a long time. I think it started when we put some bird feeders outside our family room windows and we were shocked to see birds starting to arrive at our feeders that I'd never seen before. We had Baltimore Orioles, rose-breasted grosbeaks, uh, indigo buntings. I'd never seen those in my entire life. Scarlet tanagers, hummingbirds, everything started showing up and I started 
wondering what they were called. So we bought a book and I, it just kind of exploded from there. And my kids learned it right along with me because they were small then. So I really love trying, it's kind of like a challenge to get birds because they move so fast and so quickly. And of course they fly. So it's a photographic challenge to learn how to take their photos. And I'm still working on it, still learning all the time. There are some wonderful Facebook groups that help me with that. And I've gotten to know a lot of people in the area who do it. This past fall, we had just bought a small teardrop camper and trying to find ways to uh, be able to travel safely during COVID. And I'd heard about this state park in Indiana called Jasper Pulaski. And it's kind of a secondary area for sandhill cranes to migrate to, and then they stage there. So they're coming out of Canada, the Arctic, wherever, and they stage in a huge group in Jasper Pulaski. There's another area in Kearney, Nebraska, where they do this in even larger numbers. But Jasper Pulaski is closer. It's about a four hour drive. And when we were there last fall, there were 65,000 sandhill cranes in the area. They have an app where you can check to see how many the count is. And each week that goes up until about early December, and then it starts going down again. But it was a powerful thing to watch because they, they come into one area at night, and then in the morning at first light, they all take off and they fly to fields surrounding that state park. So we would get up at four in the morning and go stand up on this kind of an overlook and watch as they would lift off. And it was really fun. You got a lot of practice uh, photographing the cranes, which are definitely one of my favorite birds. I love the cranes, both Sandhill and Whooping Cranes. And of course we have the International Crane Foundation an hour from my house which I love supporting and I love to visit there and see all the cranes that they have. I think I love cranes because it's something unique to this area that I didn't have when I was growing up in Ohio. I had never seen a crane and probably until about 15 years ago. And I think the numbers had gotten so low that even though we lived here for 34 years, we just didn't see cranes when we first moved here. I don't know, it's something about their sound. They just sound like prehistoric to me. And I feel like they're, you know, like the last link to the dinosaurs. They are just an amazing sound. In fact, I'm, I'm uh, not at all, wouldn't be at all surprised if I heard it right now because they are always flying over the field next to our house. 